time for Around the Ozarks in 5. Brought to you by the Butterfly Palace and Rainforest Adventure, Adventure Cave Tours, and Talking Rocks Cavern. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Foreheads. And here we are on Thursday, people. We've almost made it. Good morning to you. Uh, A lot of news to tell you about today, so we'll get started. All right, we begin with this. A horrible crash of a car and an Amish buggy resulted in an infant being killed. It happened in Webster County when a driver of a car hit the back of a horse-drawn buggy uh, there on the side of the highway. The child and two others, we assume the child's parents, were all three ejected. They were taken to the hospital where the child passed away. Yeah, you see them. on the, yeah, on the highway. I, you know, and I, every time I see them on the, the side of the road, I, I think, man, oh man, that's, uh, it, it's, you know, what are you going to do? It, it's probably distraction it's is my guess. I mean, I don't know yet, but it's distracted driving. Yeah. Of some it's sort. a shame. It's such a shame. Uh, next story. Uh, today is the deadline by which the circuit clerks across the state of Missouri must expunge every misdemeanor charge for marijuana possession. That is one of the results of voters passing Amendment 3 back in November, which, of course, legalized recreational marijuana. Felony charges have until December 8th to be expunged from people's records, but felony charges are going away as well. Uh, Yesterday marked 31 years since the disappearance of three Springfield women. They went missing on June 7th of 1992, and their disappearance has been a mystery for investigators ever since. Uh, They say really they're no closer to finding out what happened to Cheryl Levitt, uh, Stacey McCall, and Susie Streeter. And I covered that, of course, for many years at the station. Got to know the family of Stacey McCall, uh, at least her mom, who is amazing. But, uh, man, I hope for closure for them in that case. Yeah, I can't believe it's been 31 years and nothing. They're still no closer. I mean, there have been there have been some leads that they've tracked down over the years that came in and all of them, I guess, panned out with nothing. Right. I mean, I remember when there was talk. They they still get leads. You know, there's still things that come in that they do chase down to see, you know. Well, was it their discussion of you were covering that at the time when they were looking at sonar in one of the parking garages at Cox, uh, and then yeah. and then that that ended up not panning out? Yeah, I mean, because it wasn't based on like credible enough information to warrant digging up the parking garage. I mean, is what they is what they came to. But, um, but remind but, me I mean, what that's happened. An example. They they brought um, in sonar, right? Yeah, but the person or the story that led them there wasn't, I mean, didn't pan out to be as credible if right. I remember correctly, as they were hoping. So it then wasn't, it, was yeah, like, it wasn't, it wasn't fact-based, but right. But it wasn't fact-based. I thought so, they did some checking there with some kind of equipment. They did. We had video of that, but that was yeah. before my time. That was before my time. So they did have some sort of like uh heat detection equipment and yeah, I don't know. Oh, it's the not knowing that's uh, the hardest part. Well, and, and whoever did it is still out there. And, and who knows what else is happening? Yeah. Well, hopefully, um, you know, honestly, on the anniversaries, uh, that story gets a lot of national coverage as well on some of like the, um, gosh, what is it called? Real investigations or whatever, investigation, discovery ID. Like there's been several different shows pick it up. So sometimes that does make people start talking again. So there's always a hope, especially whenever it's talked about more, such as on an anniversary. So, right, right. so we'll see. Uh, Missouri Governor Mike Parson and several other governors are pushing back against changes that the Biden administration is making to mortgage fees. The new rules force good credit home buyers to pay more for their mortgages in order to subsidize the loans for higher risk borrowers. Uh, the rules come as the housing market has struggled in the wake of multiple interest rate hikes uh, by the Federal Reserve. So yeah, Governor Parson, be- among many others, saying uh, that's not fair. Yeah, (laughs) the rates are high enough, it seems like. Uh, It has been a a very big week for retired Springfield police officer Mark Preby and his family. Special ceremony was held at a still under construction new house for that family. 
that's being built by the Gary Sinise Foundation, we told you about this, could be finished later this year. It's about halfway done or so. Uh, you'll recall Preby was paralyzed back in 2020 when a man intentionally hit him with a car, pinning him against a concrete barrier right outside the police department. Uh, boy, I remember that day, too. All awful. Uh, this week, supporters and fellow officers gathered to dedicate the house, which will be free for the family when it's finished. Uh, write Bible verses and words of encouragement on the studs of the house before the drywall goes in. So that's such a neat story. Yeah. And I love the writing Bible verses because I remember that story very vividly, even though I don't know Officer Preby personally, the uh, probable cause statement in that uh, case said Lilith made me do it. Like that was like a quote. So I'm like, who's Lilith? What's Lilith? You know, and come to find out that is a demon that's mentioned in scripture in the book of Isaiah. So that was pretty crazy. But I feel like writing Bible verses on the foundation of his house is very fitting for yeah. the occasion. So yeah, um, yeah, praise God, honestly, that he is okay and that they're getting this house uh, free to them. So thankful for that foundation and for all the people, supporters and officers who went out to take part in that. Yeah. And it'll be of course outfitted for his wheelchair and uh, be a smart home. So, so it'll be really great uh, when it's taken care of. Uh, let's look at the weather real quick. We have isolated storms possible today, kind of like the last couple of days, but a hit or miss 83, 83 tomorrow, uh, 82, a little bit of a higher chance of showers on Sunday. Uh, and the temperature stays around the eighties for a few days. So there we go. Uh, this is cool. You may have seen this. Former St. Louis Cardinal Albert Pujols, now a special assistant to the commissioner of Major League Baseball. So that means he's going to work with the office, especially focusing on players from the Dominican Republic, where Pujols is from. Uh, he is also now a member of the MLB Network team of television analysts. So I saw him on there the other day wearing a, a suit coat and a, a you know a button up shirt and it it just looked weird to see Albert that way Yeah, for him in a uniform, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, was but, it like super tight? Like, isn't he's huge, right? I mean like huge, he's huge. a big guy, but yeah, he's, he's got, he pays for a tailor. So he's able to take care of that. <laughs> it wasn't super tight. I would, yeah. I would hope so. A <laughs> work is underway on Springfield's second beef, a fast food restaurant. It's going to be located on West Chestnut, just West of 65 in that old uh, Hardy's building. Hardy's closed down several months ago and now beef is moving in. The signage is already up, I think, because uh, I drove by and could tell that it, they're working on it. Uh, the first location for beef in Springfield opened in February on Kearney Street near Kansas Expressway. And that is actually, this is interesting, the very first beef to open outside of the company's home state of Illinois. So they're in Illinois all over the place because a lot of people like beef I found that out on day one when Griffin and I went for, to beef to check it out. Uh, let's see, it was good. He got he got a cheeseburger and so he got the famous cheddar fries. I got a roast beef sandwich, which was good. And I got some onion rings, which are also pretty good. So I've never heard of it. Never been. Yeah. Sort of want to try it, but their name throws me off a little bit. It's an odd name, beef a roux. It doesn't make you think delicious, but it's pretty good food. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> That's what you would say. Um, all right. We'll end with this. Tickets go on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m. for a special concert by the Ozark Mountain Daredevils happening on September 16th. The concert will be at Drury University O'Reilly Family Event Center and they'll be joined by several other local performers. Of course, we've already told you that the Daredevils will also be playing a special 4th of July concert on the Nos National Mall in D.C. Uh, they're performing a special concert with the Springfield Symphony Orchestra in Branson on August 19th as well. So, yeah. again, their dates, September 16th and August 19th, and then 4th of July. Yeah, they suddenly got... A lot going on, a lot of big shows. So good for yeah. them. Kind of a resurgence, if you will. Right. Um, all right. Well, have a great Thursday, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Hey, tomorrow's Friday. That's the key, and we'll see you then. All right. Bye.